Pacific Coast Highway through Big Sur has got to be one of the most spectacular drives in North America. People from around the world come just to drive this road. Everywhere you look, there's rental cars and RVs filling the turnouts and causing traffic. Gas costs $7 a gallon. And sometimes it's not even sunny. To really experience this road properly, you need a sports car. So we brought the Scion FRS. Then Paul added the Hyundai Genesis Coupe. And Todd just had to add a Lotus Elise. Rear drive, front engine, six-speed manual. This is not earth-shattering technology. It's like Toyota and Subaru have agreed to strip away everything else that gets in the way of just the enjoyment of driving. The GT86, the FRS, well, the BRZ, it doesn't matter what the badge says under the hood. They all have limited slip diffs, they all have these terrible Prius tires, they all have the same engine, same power. It's actually just down to which interior do you want. Because you know there's gonna be 8,000 body kits that change the looks anyway. You know, I'm frankly not surprised at how debated these cars are. Now you're going to start equating good driving machines with Toyota again. This is not just a Scion FRS. This is one of Toyota's first 86. It's kind of a lottery system. You picked your color, your transmission, and if they picked you, you put down your deposit, you got one of the first 86 cars. Scion is still sending them swag. I'm really fascinated by the fact that to make something really interesting and great, Toyota has to step outside of itself. It has to collaborate with somebody else. In some ways, the Lotus is a misbranded Toyota as well. I mean, it's got a Toyota heart. Well, today we brought with us a 2005 Lotus Elise. This also represents Toyota collaborating with another manufacturer. This is a Celica engine from Toyota. So it gives it another link, where like the FRS, it's Toyota working with someone to have a sports car. In order for it to first come to this country in 05, they had to put airbags in it. And now, even though it's sold elsewhere, it isn't sold here anymore because now the U.S. requires dual stage airbags and Lotus hasn't put them in this car. So airbag regulation has created the birth and death of the Lotus Elise in this country. This is a viable option for FRS money. The Scion was just over 27,000. The Hyundai was just over 27,000. And the owner of this car paid 28 grand. So you have to ask yourself, what's your priority? And a few years ago, there was a car that came out of nowhere, was rear wheel drive, was a new affordable sports car for the masses. The Hyundai Genesis Coupe was that car a few years ago. But the one we drove for the show and that I really liked was the V6 version. This, of course, is the two liter turbo. It really is the natural competitor to the Scion. And now with the revised styling on the front end, I think it looks even better. The Hyundai is a good looking car and the wheels look like Audi wheels. I find it a hundred times better than the prior Genesis. The only thing I didn't like was the actual economy car small oval grille, and they've addressed that in this second generation, but I don't think the car got prettier. Because Hyundai has now found their corporate look, I can tell instantly that it's a Hyundai. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of it is unchanged. What Hyundai has done is integrate new LED tail lamps and a really nice looking rear diffuser with good looking exhausts. It still has the same kink in the rear window. It still has the same transitioning shapes in the side. This is a very attractive car. When you see it in sheer profile, the Genesis Coupe looks surprisingly large, especially next to these other two cars. I've been thinking a lot about the styling on the FRS and the BRZ. The Subaru kind of looks like it's wearing a mouth guard, but the truth is I don't love the front end on the Scion either. The front protrusions right down at the chin spoiler these seem like they need to be filed down and let the sharpness of the headlights take the character of the car forward. I finally realized what car the FRS looks like. I couldn't figure it out for a while, and now I realize it's the Maserati Gran Turismo. It's like a half-scale model of the Maserati. 
You remember the Toyota 2000 GT? The FRS clearly evokes that styling. Even the way the windows come to a point is very Toyota 2000 GT. They ended up with a car that's just not pretty enough. I mean, it's a seven, maybe an eight, but it could have been a 10. This is a car that is starting with a blank sheet of paper. It's nice looking, but it could have been spectacular. However, the one thing on the FRS I really hate are these wheels. They look soft and spindly. It actually softens the entire design. This car is proving that simple is beautiful once again. All the lines on the car suggest motion. What I do think it suffers from though is it's more interesting in person than it is in photographs. The Lotus is by far the sexiest looking car here. My favorite thing about it has always been that this is a mini exotic and it looks like it is. The swooping crazy lines on this car are the kind of things you expect to see in a mid-engine exotic hypercar. Those quad taillights in the back make you think Ferrari. What I also like is the fender flares are also very accentuated on this car. Of course, wouldn't you know it, this Lotus shows up for the shoot in one of my least favorite colors for a car. It's got all the great black accents to offset the shapes, and the shapes really shine when you put a color on them. Of these three cars, I still think the Lotus looks the best. It's aged very well, and it's still gonna look beautiful and exotic for many years to come. It's so odd to hear that Subaru sound coming out of a Toyota. This engine is either the best Toyota engine I've ever driven or the most refined Subaru engine I've ever driven. It's got Toyota direct and port injection on a Subaru engine. So it's really a hybrid of the two companies' engine technologies with a flat four, 86 millimeter bore and stroke. But the Hyundai's engine's an 86 as well, it's just not a boxer. This has the same engine capacity, but it's got a turbo. This is the easiest car to just hop in and drive. And you can't get this much power out of the FRS. It always feels down on power to this Genesis Coupe. It makes great power, and this definitely makes the case for having more. The Genesis Coupe is a car that gets better the harder you drive it. It starts to pull, but not until you're above 4,000 RPM. This has got a totally different character of engine than the FRS. The engine also is kind of cold. It's kind of personality-less. Now, under Lotus training, this engine's been given two distinct personalities. This is the 1.8-liter four-cylinder out of the old Celica GTS. It has an upper, more aggressive cam. It starts about 6,400 RPMs. And when you hit that, it actually feels like a gear change. <laughs> that cam feels like a turbo when it comes on. And sitting in it while driving makes you feel like you're in a garbage disposal. Everything's spinning really fast and it's really noisy and you're not sure exactly what's going on, but man, is this fun! Unlike the FRS, this has every bit of power you can want. The point of discussion is, does this car have enough power? Truth be told, honestly, this is a little underpowered. Yes, it would be fun to have a turbo. Yes, it would wake this car up. It would be, frankly, amazing at that point. But you can't deny how fun this car is to drive right now. And look, we've got an almost 7,500 RPM red line. It's almost more fun to take it there at every shift than having a turbo kick in. I'm not looking for this to be a 300 horsepower monster. I find I've got 80, maybe 90% of the power I'd like to put to this chassis. I think if this had about 240 horsepower, 200 pound-feet of torque, it'd be perfect. It's so close to perfect right now. What's great about the power in this car is it comes on in a linear fashion, like it's rewarding you the faster you go. It's like your throttle response is caffeinated. Any little extra breath of your foot and the car does respond. And I'm a little worried that in a turbo version, it might lose a bit of that. It might dull the throttle some because this is so electric under your foot. Now, one thing Hyundai's very good at is improving and refining, but I don't feel like they've reached what they could in their engines or their transmissions. 
there's a bit of a delay, a bit of a spongy response to the gas pedal. It feels more like a light switch dimmer than an actual connection to the engine. And I thought, great, we've got the two liter engine. This is the one with a lot of power. I was really eager to drive this until I got on the freeway. This engine gives me a headache from the droning. Even at 6,000 RPM, this engine is, it's got this low thrum to it. At certain RPMs, it picks up pretty much every plastic piece in the cabin and just gives it kind of a BB sitting on a buzzing phone rattle and it's annoying. It's just noisy and the faster you go, the noisier it gets. I've wanted to put it in six just to shut it up. There are six speeds in here. They're kind of sloppy and loose. In fact, sixth gear is way over there. You're practically punching your passenger in the leg to find sixth gear. It feels like I'm trying to stir a bucket of nails. I can't understand where the gears are. And now that I've driven the Scion and the Lotus, I'm spoiled, I'm ruined. The FRS has the best gearbox of all three. The shortest throws, the most precise, I would compare this to any German gearbox in any German sports car, including Porsche. I can't believe I'm saying that. The six-speed on the Elise has kind of been its Achilles heel. This pod that the stick shift comes out of generally shakes quite a bit, and the shifts are actually farther and looser than you would expect. You remember those huge machete-bladed paper cutters from your elementary school days? Yeah, that's what shifting this car feels like. It's just shearing off the next gear. Does this mean I don't want one? No, no, I really do want one. Please give me a Lotus Elise. There's almost a procedure for getting in and out of a Lotus, and it's not a fast procedure, and this is not something for women in short skirts. That's the thing I hate most about it. But once you're in, it's surprising how much room you do have. The car is so small that the driver, without leaning over, can reach both window switches. There's no amenities, so the only thing for you to focus on is the road ahead and the task of driving. The steering wheel is fantastic, but a lot of the stuff behind it feels very economy car. The seats in the Lotus are really not good. Yes, they've got to be light, but it feels like garden furniture wrapped in band-aids. Now they hold you really well. But don't think about getting in it and going on a long cross-country drive, because you've got no cruise control, and you don't want to hang out in these seats for very long. I actually really like the interior on the FRS. It's not going to blow you away, but you know what? It doesn't need to. Scion concentrated on the four areas that matter most. The seats, the steering wheel, the pedals, and the shift lever. The Subaru has got a brushed aluminum on the front panels, which is nicer than the plastic panels with a fake carbon fiber weave in them. Both of them have got some really nice materials on all the places that you touch. Some of the fit and finish and button quality around the center console, that's where you start to see this is a car that costs you $25,000. The seats are excellent. The seats suggest Scion and Subaru are gonna make this a more powerful machine in the future. This has an all business, no frills about it without feeling Spartan like the Lotus does. The Genesis has by far the nicest and most usable interior of these three cars. I like the driving position, and there's a lot of space in this car. You can get real genuine humans with legs in the back of the Hyundai. Now, I do recommend that they're all under about 5'9", because if they're any taller than that, you have to kink your head to the side. What boggles my mind is how Hyundai's seats look so good, but yet they are so bad. I think I'm actually most let down by the two pieces that you touch the most. I hate the tacky feel of the steering wheel. It's like gripping the sticky part of a post-it note. And the stick shift is just a strange, glossy shape. Those two materials addressed, and I would like this interior quite a bit more. This is such a great road. It's too bad it's festooned with RVs. It is an amazing road to drive in anything, but you really ought to do it in a sports car. The handling on the Genesis is not bad. It's just not amazing. Yeah, this is the simple one to drive on a cross-country trip or pass an 18-wheeler or all the kind of stuff that is normal life driving. This actually shines the most. But you get it back on a back road, and a lot of the tactile split-second changes you want to make are a lot harder in the Genesis. A 3,400-pound car starts to be kind of the average weight of most cars on the road. So when you get into it out of other cars, this doesn't feel heavy. You get into it out of the other two, and it feels like a barge. That's not true, but 
in comparison to those two, that they feel light and nimble. Of course, the FRS's party piece, the Twins' party piece, is that they're so lightweight. 2,800 pounds is very light for a modern car. But the Lotus? This is 800 pounds lighter than the FRS. Because the car is so light, you're never in a situation where you need power steering. But because you don't have any assist at all, it's telekinetic in the way that it talks to you, in the way that it connects to what you'd like the car to do. Driving this car makes me feel like I can suddenly relate to a surgeon with the preciseness of everything. I kind of feel like, yeah, I, I understand what you do. I, I drive a Lotus. The Elise is in one of my top five favorite cars. And that's mainly because it's shocking how instinctual and informative this steering can be. The FRS is close, but this still wins on steering field all day long. As light as the Lotus is and as sharp and direct as that steering rack feels, this is right up there with it. Driving them back to back, is the Lotus steering feel better? Yes, it absolutely is. Is it a lot better? No. The Hyundai feels sloppy in comparison, and it handles fine. This is kind of what electric power steering is known to feel like. It's just this vague lack of information all the time. Like video game steering. I'm turning a wheel, and the car is following a line. But any kind of tactility or personal awareness of the grip is completely lost. This is like teaching somebody to dance who's never done it before. They're very willing and eager, but that just doesn't cut it. Whenever I drive a car with great handling, I really like to think of it as we're dancing. The car and I are dancing together, and you want her to push back on you and await instructions. What are we doing next? What's our next move? That's what I feel like the Scion is asking. I'm really starting to fall in love with this car. This shouldn't handle as well as it does. I mean, Prius tires, electrically assisted steering, these are not the pieces that are going to end up working together well, and yet they do. The Lotus gives you even more feedback. It's even more perfect in steering feel, but as a result, you lose a little bit of kind of everyday refinement and the stuff that's helpful when you are doing things like commuting. This car wants to dance all over the road just based on the dips and undulations and pavement breaks. You've got to constantly be adjusting everything, but it's so much fun. But unlike a front-engine car, this has mid-engine handling. You cannot lift off the gas going through a turn. You have to mash the throttle down. When you do, though, this car clings to corners. The faster you go, the harder you push, the more you can feel in the steering wheel. And right before you lose it and things get really ugly, you start to feel the steering go light. It starts to let you know, hey, you might want to back off a little. Things are getting a little squirrely. This is like having one of those best friends who you can just kind of look at and they know what you're thinking. But for usability, and daily driving, I cannot recommend the Lotus Elise as the only car for you to own. The Lotus is more fun to drive than the FRS, but it's not as easy to drive. The FRS is kind of like the S2000 or the RX-8. Those cars that were a bit underpowered, that kind of had quirky engine qualities about them, but just handled wonderfully and didn't weigh very much. But frankly, I think it's better than both of those. And it's better than the MX-5, more planted. It's lower and flatter in the corners than the MX-5. Imagine how much better the next Miata might be. Man, I think you need to put this on your bucket list. Driving one of these cars on the Pacific Coast Highway makes you feel alive. I've always been one to think that, well, the more horsepower, the better the car, right? I'm eating crow. I am now the first to admit it. As much as I love horsepower, I still don't think this car needs more. You can argue it. We can talk about it all day long. I'm not asking for much here. I'd like a light turbo system, maybe 240 horsepower, maybe 200 pound-feet of torque. And if they do that, I'm buying one. 
but they've done such a good job of matching weight and balance and the way this car just hangs on. You can't judge this car on how close it is to perfection. You've got to judge it on how amazing it is to just experience how much better life is when you're driving this car. I'm serious. It's like you went out looking for the perfect supermodel today. And along the way, you found this amazing woman. She's beautiful, she's good to you, she makes you a better person, and she's not a supermodel. Do you care now? Do you really care? The Hyundai Genesis Coupe is the kid in class who's got lots of potential but failed to apply himself. I'm bummed. The stats say this car should be good. I want to be careful here because the Genesis Coupe is not a bad car. If you're concerned about straight line speed, yes, this Genesis is going to kill the FRS every day of the week. But driving is about so much more than straight line speed. It's about a ton more than what the spec sheet says. And I promise you, this is not as rewarding a car to drive as the FRS. If someone told me tomorrow that I could have a 2005 Lotus, I'd be figuring out where to sign the papers. I love this car. I would love to have it. It's loud, it's hardcore, it's raw, but if any of that tires you, you're going to hate this car. The handling is brilliant, and I feel like Scion has captured much of the qualities out of this car. What's great is the Scion is so much more usable. This is so much fun, but I couldn't own this car. There's not too many roads that are more driver focused than Pacific Coast Highway. I mean, this is spectacular. This is fantastic. And you've got to bring a driver's car out here. Well, this is about the FRS. I mean, this has really kind of brought driver's That's... focused cars back. I can't believe people that don't know anything about cars have noticed this car on this shoot. I mean, that pretty much says it all. But thank God this FRS is here. Well, this is my first choice by far. I have to go with FRS. This is despite the lack of power or perceived lack of sure. power, which sure. I, I'm still going back and forth on. I, really not yeah. terrible. It's yeah. not noticeable all the time. This is doing so much. It's fantastic. And especially on this road. I yeah. mean, I was kind of disappointed by the Hyundai, to be honest. Well, and it, it can't compete with these other two. It That's can't. the thing. It, I, it, it seems like everything's there. You come out of a normal car into the Hyundai, it's a sports car, but you compare it to these, and it may be the same money, but it's not a sports car like these. So I know how much you love these too, and I know you love the Lotus. Where, where do it's, you stand? You know what? It was so close for me. Yeah. I'm still Lotus because it is a more impressive driver's car that just speaks to me. Every time I'm in it, I just laugh That's like amazing. a child. And here's the thing, though. I knew here's it. Here's the thing, though. That is a toy car. It is. If it's got to be your only car and you commute somewhere I like LA, you can't do it. You've got to have something else. And then you got to go this. If they'll turbo this, I live in the mountains. If they turbo that, this would be I'm buying amazing. that car. This and fantastic. Here's the thing. Any of these three are better than the RV or the rented Mustang. If you've rented a car or you drive an RV on this road, you have failed. You have failed yourself. <laughs> you failed your country. Seriously, yeah. which car would you pick for PCH? Which of these is your favorite? We want to know. But I'm telling you, it's that one. That one. I'm amazed. I would pick this car over many, many other cars. Even though it's down on power, I, I would just say, Goodbye, go have fun, leave me in the dust. I'm gonna have fun doing my own thing back here. Just having a blast. We've driven plenty of cars on this show where the stats seem great. It should be spectacular and it somehow falls short. This is better than the stats suggest. That's the crazy thing. If you haven't driven it, you cannot look at the stat sheet and go, oh, it's just not gonna be that much fun. It's crazy fun. Yes, it's a little underpowered, but not hugely so. This should never be a horsepower monster. It's gonna ruin that balance. It strikes me as good value for the money if all you're looking for is something that is kind of fun and sporty, but not if you want a true driving machine. There are better cars, and Subaru and Toyota have just proved that. Now you compare this to your typical front wheel drive family sedan that most people are familiar with, this feels like quite a sports car. It's just that putting it alongside the two that we have here, this is just number and more rubbery than those cars. 
The Lotus is fantastic at low speeds. It's fantastic at high speeds. It's just flat out fantastic. The problem is, it's not for everyone. Just like skydiving is a sport that's not for everyone. I just want one of these cars. There's no way around it. I'm gonna start taking up a collection. The Get Todd a Lotus collection. Can we do that, please? Can we figure out a way to just buy me a Lotus? That would complete my life.